George Floyd left behind a six-year-old daughter, and today her mother, Roxy Washington, made her first public comment since Floyd died. Here's a little bit of what she said. He would never see her grow up, graduate. He would never walk her down the aisle. I'm here for my baby. And I'm here for George because I want justice for him. I want justice for him because he was good. Sometimes you only see a turning point in hindsight, but there's a feeling America might be in one right now. The seething anger about police brutality and long-standing racial inequality goes far beyond an unarmed black man dying under the knee of a white police officer in Minneapolis. And it's testing police and political leaders. We have a great country. That's my thoughts. On Monday, after vowing to dominate the streets, President Trump used a church and a Bible as props for a photo op. The Episcopal Church got no advance warning, and the presiding bishop, Michael Curry, is outraged, accusing Trump of using a church building and the Holy Bible for partisan political purposes. Faith leaders gathered in front of the church today with a message for the president. The Bible that you held upside down in your tiny hand. That teaches us that God is always on the side of the oppressed. Other people of faith asked, has the Bible ever been used in a more disingenuous and exploitative way? Those on the religious right, though, loved it. Like the president of the Congress of Christian Leaders, who tweeted, I will never forget seeing President Trump slowly and in total command walk from the White House, defying those who aim to derail our national healing by spreading fear, hate and anarchy. Today, the president went to a shrine to Pope John Paul II, a visit condemned by the Archbishop of Washington, Wilton Gregory. He said Pope John Paul certainly would not condone the use of tear gas and other deterrents to silence, scatter or intimidate them for a photo opportunity. In order for Trump to walk to the church Monday, federal officers used force and tear gas to clear away peaceful protesters from outside the White House. This Australian cameraman and reporter were shoved and hit while live on air. One of numerous examples of reporters being targeted and attacked by authorities while trying to document what's happening. Freedom of the press is protected in the First Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. So is freedom of peaceful assembly. It's hard to know what the president's plan really is, but it feels increasingly authoritarian. Among the many images that capture the mood of what's happening right now are editorial cartoons. Canadian cartoonist Michael DeAdder uses an iceberg to depict how what is captured on cell phone video is just the tip of the iceberg, that most small daily acts of racism happen off camera and go unseen.